so much new. Okay, first up. So much new. Okay, you got this micro bit badge. Um, if you like the micro bit, and we do, we have a lot of guides and projects with the micro bit. We now have an iron on patch. It's really well made and it's got the micro bit approved logo and it's perfect for showing people that your backpack contains micro bit. Uh, and each purchase of this micro bit badge supports the micro bit foundation, yep. which they use to we uh, get micro bits to teachers who need them, who can't necessarily afford them at the full price. So that's very nice of them. Uh, so yeah. pick up this badge. It's really cool looking. Okay, next up, a little bit of an update. We didn't update to the Metro 328. Uh, just make a note because it was updated a little bit twice. Um, first up, we changed it to use the CP2104 recently. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just, a, a, in my opinion, a higher quality USB serial converter chip. It's still, uh, you know, compatible with the Arduino Uno. You can use it with all of our shields. We've tested it. Um, it works lovely and uh, now has through hole headers and power jack, so it's even better. This version actually is a, the, the, it, the rotating image is from an older version. This is the current version, which has all through hole pads on everything. So it's a little more durable and has a slide switch that's right angle. Uh, so okay. it's easier to turn on or off and we reduce the price as well. Even lower price, go, go lady us. Idiot. Okay. We've got this four way like joystick now it's not like an arcade joystick i want to make sure people don't think it's good for arcade joystick action it's kind of like a robotic controller um i want to show what the difference is here and i'll do that on the overhead yeah so i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna try to see how this works yeah it's so crazy. the thing that's up with this is that it's a four-way so it goes um you know up down left right but unlike arcade joysticks, once you go in a direction, you can't get it out of that direction. Like you can only, you can only move it across. You can't rotate it around. Like arcade joysticks, they only have four switches, but you can rotate them in any direction and it will, you know, you can actuate two switches at once. With this, you can only actuate one switch at once. Um, that said, instead of using micro switches, it actually has, uh, let me see if I can, so you can see here, Maybe I'll turn this light on. You can see it has um, like a contact that comes up and down. So it's like it can pass many, many amps of current. So this is really good for like a very powerful robotics project or somewhere where you want to make sure that people can only move in one direction at a time. You don't want multiple switches to be activated. That said, it's a really nice quality, you know, joystick like controller and I think could be useful for some things like simulators or robots control or or maybe AT projects where you really only want one direction active at a time so that is this four-way joystick controller okay next up um got a new PCB holder this PCB holder is actually Colin recommended it um if you know it's from Colin you know it's good yeah he recommended it so what says about this is it's fully adjustable. It's going to be actually kind of hard. Actually, I should just hold this up. So it's it's really large. Um, can, and then, can go to just this. I'm just go to this. Yeah. Thing. Hold on. This is just, oh this. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I'm like, where am I? You have to get closer. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Hold on. Um, I don't want to say in focus. Yeah. So what's nice about it is you can rotate. So it's 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 stiff enough you can work with it and you can tighten the, the rotation. Um, if you want to like fix it in place, or you can like make it a little bit difficult so you can rotate around. So it's good if you have like through hole where you're placing components in um, one side and then you want to then flip it over and solder the other side. It's, it's particularly good for that. And um, it's also really easy to remove boards. It's got this um, spring actuation here. So it's got these grooves that can hold a PCB. So you, you kind of pull the spring and then push this in and then it, it grabs the board. So it's really easy. And then of course these, these side grips are also adjustable. They can go back and forth. Um, so you can rotate this and then yeah. move this. And the rotate can, thing's probably the best feature. Basically the rotate is the nicest, but you can make this, you know, small. It doesn't have to be for big boards. Now it's good for big boards, but you can use it for smaller ones as well. And it's, it's very adjustable. So. I really like this PCB holder. I think it's I think it's good for if you have space on your desk. It's a little larger than most, but it's nice and heavy, um, and it's durable, made out of metal. It's got these nice rubber bumpers on the bottom, so it's it stays nice and flat on your desk. And yeah, the spring action is pretty sweet. So this okay. is a good, 
control. Yeah, this is a good PC holder for your, your PCB soldering. All sorts of surface mount and tool. Okay, next up. This is the uh, new laptop, the V2 Pi Top. Um, this works with any modern Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know, the V Plus that just came out would be a good addition to it. It, it basically you can snap your Raspberry Pi into it and it turns it into a full laptop. And I, I've got it over here and I can hold it up. Yeah. To show it off. This I can those. definitely just hold up. This is too big for the overhead. But you've got a. Uh, this pairs nicely with a Circuit Playground. This, yeah, you can use it with a Circuit Playground. What's neat is you've got this um, keyboard and then. I don't know how you do it, but you can slide this down. I don't know if I can hold it and slide it at the same time. But you want this thing right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. So you can slide down, you can see the Raspberry Pi computer up here, and then there's these metal railings. You can um, attach USB devices and like prototyping stuff. There's like a heat sink, and then you the, could put your circuit playground in there. You could store it in there, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then on the back is the USB ports, so an Ethernet port. So if you want, this is a cool computer over here. So yeah, it's an all-in-one computer. This is cool. Um, it's very well made. It's got this lovely green color. And then, yeah, it comes with uh, PIOS, which is, like, you know, an operating system that just makes it really easy. It's a little Chrome-like that lets you um, get going with your project. Comes with a battery, charger, the screen. Yeah. You don't have to do very much at all. It's pretty much fully yeah, assembled. Yeah, pop the card, go. You pop the card in, you put in your Raspberry Pi, and you've got a full laptop. Okay. Next up, I'm really excited about this one. Welcome to a world where Python on hardware is just doing stuff. This, it's everywhere. This is a calculator, and it runs MicroPython. You can put Python code on this thing. That's right. This is from NumWorks, and we sort of, I found this a little bit by accident, actually, looking for WebUSB resources, and they use WebUSB for their bootloader, and sort of how I found it. Um, and yeah, this is a, it's an operating system that's based on MicroPython that's running this calculator. It's a, it's, in a couple months, it's going to be approved for um, use on the SAT or ACTs, so um, yeah, you can use it for exams. And, and here I'm actually just showing off um, the uh, Python mode, and you can see there's there's like a Python shell that you can run, and you can you can write Python in it, which is pretty cool. You can write your own programs. Um, but that said, it has you know calculations built in, so you can do four plus six and then execute and it, it's it's actually I think just running Python on the inside but um, this is your basic calculator but it also has um, the ability to do all sorts of and, and other it's things. and it's oh it's Function. pretty close to open source I think they put everything up you, there's the, all the github stuff and it, for the hardware and yeah. software stuff it's close whatever it is they did a good job they published a lot I want to yeah. mention it's not you know true open source I it can't is, get a TI published. I can't get all the code for a TI cal yes that's right you can do the code, do you that. can modify it but it's under non-commercial licenses yeah um, but they do publish the schematics and they do publish the PCB uh, layout so you can do hacking with it. Okay. And then, yeah, there's, there's Python, so it's running uh, MicroPython. And uh, it's got a really lovely keyboard. And um, this is you know, the cover, of course, so you can, you can close it and take it with you. And I've got a rechargeable battery. And it's running an STM32 F4 something something. So it's running a 100 megahertz processor. If you just processor. like to run little Python things, this is fun to go and just run Python code. You can and, run and Python. Pocket Python. Pocket Python. Yeah. And the, yeah, the keyboard, you can use as a keyboard. Yeah. And then um, over here, you can see there's a USB. And we posted up, there's projects. People are already using it to control robots and stuff. Yeah, you can hack and yeah. mod it. And it's got this full color screen, which is pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and yeah, you can firmware update it. So you have to firmware update it to get to uh, adding Python. But then, yeah, I mean, you can add more functions if you want. Like it's, you can just compile it yourself and for the STM32. Next up, the star of the show besides the community <laughs> yeah. and Lady Ada is this. It's a little display. Um, we'll show a demo because the, the display itself is just black, the black mirror. Um, this is a 1.54 inch TFT display. And what's nice about this display, it's a IPS yeah, it's a 240 by right 240. There. Um, Pixel, I'll have to zoom in because it's a yeah. small display. Hold on, give me a moment to zoom in here. Um, it's a very high pixel density display. Um, I think it's a 220 PPI, and usually you get like maybe 100 PPI from um, hacker displays, so that's text. Um, it's almost the resolution of like, uh, I think the first generation iWatch or the first uh, Nano, 240 by 240. And we've 
tried to get these displays before, but they've always been nippy, which a lot of people's chips don't have native support for. Um, but we finally found um, a factory company that would take this 1.54 inch TFT um, display and put it on the SPI um, bus for us. And so it uses the ST7789, which is a chipset that we support really well with our Arduino library. We also have a, a Python library that basically supports it. Um, another nice thing is it's IPS. So no matter what angle I do it at, you can, you can see it doesn't change the color. Like I'm not able to get focused because I'm so close, but the color doesn't change. So it's got good um, nice. angle viewability. It's IPS. It's basically the same kind of display that's on like your phone and your tablet. Compare that to the lower cost displays, which often you know, they, they invert the colors because they're not uh, in plane switching. And um, yeah, like you can see the text is like super small, but that's text. It's, it's just very, very, very tiny text. And it's very skinny, it's got a nice backlight. And we put on a breakout board for you. It's got a um, micro SD slot and uh, you just use it with any SPI display. So you have an Arduino code for it. That's great, you can use it with Python or CircuitPython if you like MicroPython. Basically anything that supports the ST77 chipset, uh, you can easily make it work with this one. Okay. Um, so a really great little display. You can see how, how good it looks even at unusual angles. And it's very thin. Good contrast too, the black is very black. And even though it's got a big backlight. So those are the new products of the week. All right, 